Welcome back to the wizard shop. And if one North Star is not enough, oh no, two is even better. I've added to my hoopty fleet, and this car isn't even going to be mine. Many of you have probably seen Hoovy's video already where he got two Alantes, a white one and a red one, and he kind of did a double mint commercial type thing and everything, and we went over it and ended up with a bill that was substantial. And in the agreement, he would give me the red one for free if I just fixed his white one. So that was the agreement. Now I'm the proud owner of an Elante, a vehicle I told you guys never, ever buy an Elante. And here I have one. And not only that, I'm going to give it to Mrs. Wizard. She's going to be her car. We went over this in Hoovy's video already, put it on the lift. We kind of real quickly went over it. But we're going to go over it a little bit more thorough this time. We're going to look at the interior and really check it out. So let's get this thing over to the lift and start talking about this car. This is crazy, guys. Oh, yeah. So when I started it, you guys heard it doesn't sound stock with the exhaust, and it's not. It has a, a Flowmaster style muffler on it. It sounds really good, but here we are, guys. Another North Star. This would be like, I think it's my fifth one I've ever owned. I just keep ending up with these North Stars. And I tell you guys, never buy one of these. And here I just keep coming up with them. This is what happens when you're friends with Tyler Hoover. Crazy, wacky things like this happen, but I'm not complaining. This is a cool little car. And like I said, I'm gonna give this to Mrs. Wizard. And today we're both gonna go over this car. You guys are gonna to get to hear her voice and possibly maybe even see her. And without further ado, let's get this thing on the lift. And let's talk about it. Now when Tyler rolled this vehicle into my shop, he actually had these wheels on it. And there's a time and a place for these kinds of wheels. There's nothing wrong with this type of wheel. But to me on this vehicle is hideous. It looks absolutely atrocious. I got a hold of a set of factory wheels. These are the stock Alante wheels. And it came with good tires. We got those put on there to make, just kind of complete the package. It's, a, it's, it's in really good shape. There's no sense in doing that stuff to an Elante, not in my opinion. So we're back to stock on the wheels and these are, I don't know, you'll have to ask Hoovy what he wants done with these. Well, let's take a look underneath. I can already tell you since it's a North Star, I haven't even, I don't even have to look at it. The oil pan's soaked in oil. I already know that. So let's take a look at where the radiator is. I don't see anything wet there. You can see it's got some age on it. Some of these, like the AC line here is crusty, but it's still holding. I don't see any antifreeze there, so that's a good sign. Move on to the engine down here. Oh, look, just like I predicted, oil all over the oil pan. In Tyler's video, we looked at this, and it's the lower pan that's leaking. If you look further up to the lower crankcase half, it's really not that bad up there. This is the culprit, the lower pan, and I can do that without pulling the motor. So we're going to go ahead and fix that for sure. And the brakes. Brakes look good. There's no play. Go over to this side. Looks good. No play. I can tell that it's been sitting for a while. The rotors have got a they were got crusty on it. That doesn't surprise me. Okay, the transmission pan is dry. This is the 4T80E transmission. Everything looks good there. 
look up through here, look at the valve covers and there's a little bit of seepage but it's not worth tearing them apart to get to it. And original exhaust is still intact up here anyways. Take a look back, go towards the back, there's the fuel tank. I don't see any fuel leaking, that's a good thing. On an older car like this, that's really something to look for. Is there any fuel leaking? You'd be surprised that some cars do have that with this age on them. These brake pads are a little thin, they could, they could be replaced. No play there, sway bar's good. It's got a little surface rust, nothing too serious. Again, brake pads. These have the magnetic ride shocks on them. They do not make these anymore. You cannot buy them. Uh, Jeff Bezos couldn't buy them. No one can buy them. They're not even made anymore. These are still good. They're still working fine. There's no leaks and they're actually still working. When they do fail, you have to do passive system on it. Just put standard struts and resistors to fool the computer. But to go back to this system is impossible. It's not going to happen. So we'll use them while they work, and when they don't, we'll convert it over. And here's the flow master. That's why it sounds good. That's not a stock muffler. They didn't mount it too well. It's kind of shaky. I'm going to fix that, do some readjusting or change the mounts around at least up here put something up here tires are all good because I just put those on they've got some age on the tires but the treads are still fine I don't see too much to talk about under there other than the oil pan and the rear brake pads fix this exhaust and that's about it under here I'll just go ahead and lower it down So I know from Tyler's video that the radiator cap is bad, and we could tell that because the, the hose was wet. I jokingly was going to charge him 13 cents to install the cap, and that's just kind of a running joke that I have with him. I, in some of his videos I charge him for crazy amounts, a little $1.37 for stuff. It's just kind of a running joke. It's no, it's no secret that Tyler has money. It seems that people that have money always seem to be getting taken advantage of, whether it be the handyman for your house or mechanic or whatever. When they know you have money, all of a sudden things get marked up two and three and four times more than normal. So it's just kind of a joke I have with him, like, oh, I know you, so I'm gonna charge you a dollar for this and five dollars. I actually don't charge him that stuff, guys. Anyways, let's take a look around the engine bay. This thing here is some sort of a aftermarket, they call it chipping your car. Really all it is is it takes engine coolant temperature sensor readings and modifies them before it gets to the computer and tells us it's cold all the time so it gives more fuel and you get more power we're going to be taking that off and throwing that in the trash i'm not a fan of this stuff at all anytime i come across that on someone's vehicle i tell them you're welcome to keep it if you want but i recommend not it's just the computer is operating off of a set of parameters that's not even true it can't make a proper adjustments. I mean, it doesn't run at its peak efficiency. Anyways, let's take a look here. The brake fluid is pretty dark. It could be flushed and changed out. So, and I see a little mouse nest right here underneath the, that's probably when the car was sitting. It's underneath the reservoir there. We'll have to clear that out. The valve cover on this side looks good, it's dry. The water pump on these engines is right here, driven off of the camshaft. There's a little belt right there. That can be a pain to replace, but it's not leaking and it looks good. Really everything's in pretty good shape. It's got 146,000 miles on it. It has less problems than on this one than the white one that Tyler has. Anyways, I don't see that we have to do a whole lot to this car to make it a daily driver for Mrs. Wizard. Speaking of Mrs. Wizard, 
let's go ahead and talk about some of the some of the facts about this car, its production numbers and things of that nature. What what have you got to tell us on that, Mrs. Wizard? Well, gosh, Car Wizard, they actually made these from only a couple of years, from like 1987 to 93, and this is actually the last ones that they made. The 87 and 88 actually had the 4.1 HT 4100 V8 with only 170 horsepower. Mm -hmm. 89 to 92 had the 4.5 liter LW2 V8 with 200 horsepower. Both of those had the F7 auto transmission. The 93 was the only year that it was lucky enough to get the North Star 4.6 liter. But this guy has 295 horsepower and does have that 4T80E transmission that we saw on the bottom side. Top speed for this baby's 140 miles per hour. The body was designed and built by Pinon and Farina of Ferrari fame. The car was actually built in Italy and flown to the U.S. in specially designed 747s. They built 21,430 Elantes. And they cost at the time between fifty and sixty thousand dollars. That's somewhere between one hundred and ten to one hundred and thirty thousand in today's dollars. That's a lot. The Elantes actually had some famous stardom. J.R. Ewing drove a silver one in Dallas. The '93 was actually the pace car for the '92 Indy 500 and was driven by Bobby Unser. Mm. And just recently, in 2016, Bruno Mars drove a black Elante in his 24K Magic video. All right, Bruno Mars. So it sounds like it could be a cool car to drive. I'm excited to get it started and get behind the wheel. It is a pretty cool car, very cool. Are you ready to drive this thing off, Mrs. Wizard? Let's take a peek at the interior. Yeah, let's do that first. As you can see, there are a ton of buttons. I, it's insane. I, I can't imagine any of these cars actually existed to today's time because just to be driving down the road and then have to push a button, it's like, good grief, which do I push? And you know, some of these buttons don't even make sense. Why do we need to have a fade button? The back seat's right there. My tr How much do we need to fade between the front and the back or from left to right? I can touch the other side. It's absolutely crazy. The digital dash, of course, was new for during this time, which was actually quite high tech 493, having all of these different gauges now, but these were notorious for braking. The electrical systems on these are always, you know, having a history of either shorting out or having hard repairs. Plus, it probably didn't help with earlier Elantes how the water would leak in as well. I couldn't imagine how much damage the water leaks would have done to this electrical stuff. What do you think, Car Wizard? I think I'm going to pan out here and watch you drive off. Definitely sounds like it's got some good power. Hi, everybody. I think I'm going to go take this for a test drive. a fun drive. I think I'll take maybe I'll let you go with me next time. Yeah, if I was to drive it, I'd probably do a burnout. Maybe so. You might test <laughs> that 140 miles per hour. Okay. Well, anyways, you guys got to see what Miss Wizard looks like, and here she is in all her beauty and glory. One thing that I did forget to mention is we're going to be putting a serpentine belt and a tensioner on this. You can hear the squeal on it when it was running. But other than that, I think this is going to be a great car for her in the spring and summer. She has that off, and she can just cruise around in this car and enjoy the top down. And fun little sporty little car for her. I think it'll be great. Anyways, I'm glad you guys could follow along and check this car out with us. And if there's any tools or you want to know what kind of tools I use, check my Amazon affiliates below. We also have hoodies, shirts, coffee mugs, and hats for sale. In the merchandise portion, you can click that link. And again, we got many more cool videos to come. We're getting into the new year 2020 and a whole new year of car wizard so again thanks for watching guys